Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making wooden spoons. This is a fun project that most people can whip out in a matter of a couple hours. It is a, a fun, simple thing. And normally I'm gonna go out to the wood, grab a log, chop it out and make my own spoon blank and uh, turn spoons. But Tay Tools actually makes spoon blanks and they are currently on sale for 50% off. So I thought, uh, let's skip the log part and go straight to the spoon blank. So today, let's make some spoons. Spoon carving is one of those fun projects that most people can do pretty quickly with just a couple knives. It is a fun pastime that you can do just about anywhere as long as you have wood and you have the knives you need, you can go to town on. I'm going to be starting a lot of this with a basic carving knife. This is just a, a fairly simple one that I've had for years. Uh, it was made by a friend of mine and it's a, a fairly straightforward, easy knife. It allows you to get into all of these outside curves and you can kind of ride the bevel and go around the, the curves. But with this, I can do all of the outside handle, all of the outside of the bowl and can get it down into shape. For this first one, I am going to just make it a rounded handle, a very simple football shaped handle. I'm not going to do anything, simple, anything fancy on it, I'm just going to carve away on it and make a bunch of curls and chips. Making sure you're going with the grain, so you're always slicing off the grain as opposed to getting underneath it. So you're going to be rotating it around and sometimes you're going towards the bowl, sometimes you're going away from the bowl. And trying not to go towards yourself at any time. I have a thumb guard on and this is actually just a, a piece of tape wrapped around a scrap of leather on my, my thumb. And for that, it allows me to then slide towards my thumb because I can... I can make sure if I accidentally nick into my thumb, I'm not going to actually nick into my thumb, it's going to go into there. And uh, you can hold it in different ways to try and make sure you're, you're keeping your fingers out of the way because if you're going to cut yourself, it's going to be done with a knife. Uh, when you're doing carving with a chisel, you're usually pretty safe, but with a knife, it always tends to slip. So most of the time I'm going to be pushing it away from me, but sometimes I'm going to be pulling it towards my thumb. This is a hook knife, and these are from Narex. They're some of my favorites. They, they make a, a set of them with uh, bevels on different sides and then one with a bevel on both sides and a couple different size um, hooks. They allow you to get into these small areas. When you're carving down one hill into a valley and then you carve from the other hill down into the same valley, you'll be left with these jagged pieces, and that's where you actually want to go across the grain. And a hook knife is a fantastic way to do that. So we're going to be doing a lot more of that with the bowl, but at the neck of the, the spoon where you're coming down and into the neck, you can use that hook knife then to clean out that extra. Now here I'm just kind of shaping it and getting eh, something close. I'm really not looking for any particular shape in this. I'm just playing with it and whittling away, making chips and curls. I don't need anything special. I'm just having a little bit of fun with it. And that's one of the things about spoon carving I love is you don't have to have anything specific shaped in mind. You can just have a little bit of fun. And here you can see the, the hook knife. I can start at the tip of the bowl and start pulling them back, but then I can go across the grain and sever off of these so that they don't splinter out and then run back into the bowl. You're going to always be sharpening as you go. I keep a strop on the bench just so that I can run them over that every five or six minutes. The sharper you keep the tool, the easier it'll work for you. So different knives will allow you to do different things. You really only need one, but sometimes you want the bevel on one side so you can push on the back of it, and sometimes you want it on the other side so that you can pull it towards your thumb. And sometimes you want a hook knife so that you can you want one with a blade on both sides so you can go back and forth, and sometimes you want a smaller one or a bigger one. And so it's, it's nice to have a set of them, but you really only need one at any one given time. A lot of this is just going to be taking small bite by small bite. Anytime you take a large bite with a knife, you're going to be running into problems. So think about smaller the better and uh, go at it slowly. Eventually you're going to have all these facets and then you get to a point where you have to ask yourself, do you want to leave it with the facets or do you want to make it smooth? And most people immediately think they want to make it smooth, but that is a far more difficult task to do because you're going to end up taking off each little facet. So then you create a bunch of smaller facets, then you have to go back through and take the ridges between those and you end up going smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until eventually you run out of wood and you punch a hole through it. Um, so you're kind of playing with it back and forth. So I put that first one aside and now I'm moving on to the second spoon. And this one I want to do a little bit more of a geometric shape. I want to spend a little more time with this one. I'm going to make the bowl faceted, but the handle is actually going to be um, a, a diamond shape. And so we're going to carve out the bowl the way we want it. You can see how these knives, when they're good and sharp, they just slice through it, especially with this. Uh, the, the wood is, is so easy. It runs right through it. Nice thing with... Uh, uh, with this is it's just it, it's buttery you can do it with uh, with beech and other things and that works really really well it takes a little bit better you need to make sure your knives are sharp make sure you have a good bench dog they do help you out on the bench 
I'm holding things for you. <laughs> so with this one, I carved the outside of the bowl first, and now we're going to come in with a knife. You can see I work my hand, my uh, my thumb on the back of the blade, and it just gives me a little more precise carving. I'm going to slice down in at the neck, and this way, when I carve down into it, the chips will split off. And so I'll carve down towards that uh, that slice, and then split off a piece, and then cut that slice a little bit deeper. Again, I'm coming back through and removing facets, and this time I'm also putting my finger under on the inside so I can feel how thick the wood is. And I want to make this one really, really thin, and I ended up making it a little bit too thin, um, but I kind of like uh, just playing with it and experimenting. That's one of the great things about this. You really can't do it wrong. There is no right or wrong way to make a spoon. It's, it's just a practice and fun, and it, whether or not it's the perfect spoon, exactly what you're looking for. As long as you're having fun, that's, that's where the point is. So on the handle, I'm going to turn it into a diamond shape. So I'm carving off these facets running down either side. As they get close to the neck, I need to be very careful not to let them splinter off and then run into the spoon so we can uh, cut them off there. On the, the back, I'm going to be coming in at a 45 degrees on one side, 45 degrees on the other side, and you can see how those will then fit into each other. And then at this bulge point, I want to slice in 45 degrees and create a little chip out. Just a, a little detail to add something to it. I'm going to do that all the way around. So it ends up being octagonal in the middle and then diamond shaped at both the, uh, the at both ends of it. Nice thing about the square faces is you can come in with a card scraper or the flat side and clean them up very, very quickly. I'm going to be using this one from Bearcat that I really like. And it has a good facet that allows me to get inside of bowls as well as do the necks. So if you want to get them smooth, like this first one, I wanted to get it relatively smooth. You can do pretty much the whole thing with the card scraper. Uh, with this small ba soft basswood, it's very, very difficult to get it good with the card scraper. You have to make it nice and sharp, and you end up making a lot more dust than you want to. And if you don't want to do that, then I also pull out the uh, the sandpaper and show you, yeah, you can do it with sandpaper too. Um, some people really hate the idea of sandpaper, um, but for softwoods like this, it's, it's very useful. Uh, this is a bow sander. I have several videos making these, and they're a great thing to have in the shop because they allow you to get into organic shapes. I use it all the time for totes and knobs that are rounded, but anytime I want to smooth it out, I can go at it with this. And about halfway through, I kind of liked looking at the, the half-faceted, half-smooth on the bowl. There wasn't any sharp corners, but there were several flat spots, and that kind of looked cool. So I'm kind of playing with that idea, um, going halfway between making it all the way down. Um, and, you know, I've done smooth before and I've done completely faceted, but eh, something a little different. Again, it's a time you can experiment. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see there's still a few splinters and things on this, and I could have spent a lot more time really cleaning it down, but I didn't want to. Uh, I just wanted to have a bit of fun at the shop. So we're going to be using my homemade boiled linseed oil. This has no chemicals inside it. It is made in my shop. Just let it soak into the wood. Let it take up as much of that as I want. And then wipe off the excess and then apply some paste wax. And there you go. We've got a bowl. Now my thin one with the faceted handle, notice there's a chip in it. And that's because it was a bit thin. But the other one was a bit thicker and came out really nice. Try something new. So there you have it. I've had fun making two different. I like having the uh, the more traditional shaped handle, but there's something about the smooth that is very challenging and difficult to do, and it's fun to kind of play around. And with the 50% uh, the off on the spoon blanks, uh, it's kind of fun. So these ones that I worked with today are made out of basswood. Uh, he also has them out of birch, and they're all 50% off with the link down below, which I believe is Spoon Flash. Um, so use that 50% off and have a little bit of fun. I um, also have links to all of the carving tools that I use down below. This is one of those projects where if you don't have a lot going on, all you need is one or two hook knives and a regular carving knife, a block of wood, and you can make something. And it's just a fun thing when you don't have a lot of other things. Just sit down on the porch, enjoy your time, and make yourself a spoon or a knife or a fork or a cutlass, whatever you want. <laughs> so I hope you like this. This is always a fun one, and I'll probably be making more in the future. I do have a few other spoon carving and utensil carving videos as well if you want to see those. Also, I want to say a huge thank you to the patrons on Patreon, everyone scrolling over on the side, uh, members here on the channel, people who've clicked that join button, thank you. I really cannot say it enough. You are the reason Wood by Right is still here, the reason why I can fiddle around with things like this and just show off some things that I like. So if you want to find out more about that, there's a link to Patreon down below, or you can click the Join button and become a member here on YouTube. Thank you for that. I know I say it every week, but thank you. You really are the reason the lights are still on in the shop, and thank you for that. So I think that'll about do it for today, and until next time, have a wonderful day.
A spoonful of BLO makes the wood chips go down, the wood chips go down, the wood chips go down. 